Hey guys, welcome back. This is gonna be a project video. In this video, we're gonna build a round purse. This is basically a really small rope bag. Um, if you have questions on building rope bags, this video is gonna be pretty helpful uh, because it's basically the same construction uh, process, the way I build my rope bags. is gonna be very close to this. There's some differences, but it's very close. Supposedly round purses are pretty popular right now, and so we came up with this little style. It's very easy to build. It's a great way to get rid of some scrap leather if you've got a lot of nine, 10 ounce laying around um, and you just want a, a good gift idea for your customers, or maybe you wanna build some gifts for family members or friends for Christmas. This is a great little project and it's very easy to build. It's not very hard. Uh, if you don't have a sewing machine, you could definitely buck stitch the gusset in. It's got a lot of space to tool, but not overwhelming. And so kind of like the shave kits, it's just one of those good little items to have around Christmas time, especially. But they're really cool. They're just a crossbody purse, real small. It's not super small. I've got a big iPhone Plus and it fits in here fine with other stuff. I mean, I don't really carry this around, you know, with stuff in it or anything like that. I've got a friend that does. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing going. There is a companion pack that goes along with this video. There'll be a link for that in the description. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started and make this right quick. All right, so I've got some nine, 10 ounce Hermit Oak here. And we're gonna go ahead and cut out our two main body pieces. And these are basically just eight inch circles. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut them, those out. But what I'm also gonna do is go ahead and put my center line in there. On my pattern, I put a mark there for just the center line. This will help line up our gusset as well as any kind of tooling or maker stamp or anything you're gonna put in there. You can go ahead and put you a line on there with a, with a light pencil or something, then that way you can see where the actual center is. Sometimes it can be hard to find center uh, once you cut it out. All right, and here we're just gonna go ahead and prep these for tooling with some blue painter's tape. And um, we're not gonna show any of the tooling in this video just for sake of time. Um, we've got other videos that are dedicated towards showing you our tooling process and stuff. So here we're not gonna end up showing you that. All right, so here we've got a piece of four six ounce old tan chap leather. And it's, uh, I really like this stuff. It's just a real dark, heavy pebble grained chap leather. It makes really nice gussets. And so we're gonna go ahead here. I'm trying to figure out exactly how long I need to make the gusset. And uh, if you get the pattern pack, that'll all, it'll be the right size. You cut it out to our dimensions, it'll fit right. But I'm doing this roughly three and a quarter wide. And, um, and then it's just extra long so that I know I have plenty as I fit the gusset. All right, and here I've got some nine, 10 ounce belt weight leather, and I'm just gonna cut out a uh, three quarter inch strip of, of that for our shoulder strap. And one strip is plenty. There's only one piece to the shoulder strap. And here, since all this has been tooled, we're gonna go ahead and pull off the blue painter's tape and do all our edges and finish work and get these panels ready to be assembled. And we do have some videos on how I do my edges and uh, we'll put a link to that in the description if you want to see exactly our edge process. Okay, so now we're gonna edge our three quarter inch strip for the shoulder strap here. And um, that's a, just a little trick there for edging narrower straps. It works really good. It's a, it's a lot easier than trying to hold that strip in place. And um, we've done a bit video on that as well, kind of showing that. And it's been shown by a few other craftsmen as well. And it makes a really fast way of edging long, narrow strips.
Now here I'm going to go ahead and drench this and I'm not leaving it in there very long. I'm just trying to get it wet because I'm going to go ahead and crease it. Now there I'm using a push creaser. Um, that is just a craft tool, I believe, just a real cheap creaser that I got in a, in a uh, bunch of stuff that we bought. And those you just push and so the outer side is longer to help you guide along the edge and then the inner side actually kind of puts a bevel or a crease in there and many of y'all have probably seen this on a lot of strap work and it makes a really nice edge um, sometimes it works a little better if you don't use your edger first on the edge and just have that cut edge but here I wanted to try it with it edged already and it seemed to work really good it's a little harder to keep in line but it seemed to work really well All right, and so this strip has kind of dried out a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and get it wet one more time, and then I'm going to slick the edges on this. Now, I do this kind of quickly on long straps. Uh, this works well on reins or anything kind of narrow and long, and I just grab it with my slicking rag and then just pull it through the rag, and that tends to get a really nice edge, and it kind of slicks the back a little bit and uh, gets really a little bit of stretch out of it as well, so works really good on strap goods. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of oil on these. We're going to put some oil on them, and then we are going to antique these. So we'll go through that whole process. Again, we're not going to show every every step of it. We do have videos on our antiquing process if you'd like to go back and watch those. And I'm just using olive oil here. That's all I use, just regular olive oil. All right, so here I'm just prepping the gusset. I'm going to go ahead and cut a nice square end right there on the uh, gusset piece. I'm going to just cut it straight, and you can use shears or a knife. Now, if you're trying to figure out how long to make the gusset on anything round like this, uh, find your center on top and bottom, and then we're going to go ahead and set that center on the edge there, on our straight edge, and then we're going to end up rolling it down the length of that gusset, and that's going to give us an idea of where the center of that gusset's going to be and where the other end is going to be. And so now that we know where the end is, we're going to go ahead and put a mark there. 
and we'll get a, uh, a nice square cut on that end as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and add about a half inch, half to three quarters of an inch is fine. Just a little bit of an overlap there. And that's the piece where they're going to overlap each other. We'll sew those together and that'll make the full circle there. Now we'll go ahead and cut our hole for our zipper. We want to find the center there, but you want to measure to the first mark, not to the very end. Remember, we added a half inch, so you want to center that up in the finished gusset, basically. And so whatever zipper length is on the zipper that you're going to use, you'll want to cut that slot. I recommend a 9 inch on this purse. The one I'm using in the video here is a 14 inch, which is too long. And then we'll run a center line down there. And you want to check that with your tape just to make sure that's centered all the way down. And then I'm just taking a half half round punch, basically makes a U, and I'm going to punch one on one end and one on the other. You can make one of these from an old number nine or number ten hole punch, just grind off half of it. And then we'll connect those two, and that'll cut our long bag punch, basically, or a long oblong punch uh, slot there for our zipper to sit up inside. Very similar to the way we did it in the uh, shave kit video. All right, so we've got our hole in there for our zipper to fit up in, so we'll go ahead and glue these together. And once they're glued together, we'll go ahead and sew them on our little sewing machine. Again, you can hand sew this if you have to or sew it on whatever machine you'd like, but we'll just glue this in place and then uh, sew it up and our gusset will be ready to assemble. All right, so right there you can see our lineup mark and our overlap. And so that'll just help us to line it up so that it's square. And what we're gonna end up doing is skiving both of those ends down so that as they overlap, they don't create a bump. This will make it much easier when you go to sew it. So now we'll glue, put glue only right there at our overlap and on the other side and we'll let that dry a bit and then we'll stick them together and sew them up.
All right, and you can see how nice and clean that looks. Now, what we want to be sure is line those zippers up, and that, if you did everything right, every uh, that seam right there should be basically dead center if you fold that gusset in half, and that's what we want. All right, and through the finishing process, sometimes we lose our marks as far as our center marks. So here we're going to line this back up, and I'm going to be sure that I can definitely see that mark, and then we're going to carry that mark over to the edge um, so that we can see it when we line up our gusset. We also put center marks on the zipper, or where the zipper is, Center, put a center mark on the gusset so that we can line those up with those edge marks there that we're putting on the, on the outer edge of the body pieces we've got to be sure that when we put the gusset on that it's centered on both panels or else it'll look kind of cattywampus and so right now I'm going to go ahead and groove these and that way they're ready for stitching after we glue our gusset in All right, so we'll go ahead and glue up our gusset and our main body pieces here. And we're just putting glue around the edge so that we can glue the gusset to there. And um, we'll go ahead and put a little bit around that edge of the, of the gusset as well so we can get it glued. We'll let that get tacky and then we'll glue it in. And so as you line this up, you'll see I put center marks pinning on the zipper and then you've got your seam to line up the bottom mark. And so now we've got our mark there on our main body piece and we'll line those two, two up and we'll do the same on the other side, which should keep everything where they're both lined up perfectly. And then we'll just work our way around here. I do recommend kind of work your way around one side a little ways and then switch over and work your way around the other side a little ways and kind of do that alternating until you get down to the bottom. And that way you've got a little bit of slack to line up that seam on that bottom center mark. Anytime you're using gussets, that always helps kind of work both ends a little bit at a time all the way down instead of just rolling with one side all the way. All right, so here I'm sewing the front panel onto the gusset. I would wait to sew that until you've got the back panel glued on as well, and that way you can glue the strap loops on there and then sew them all at one time. I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit on this one and went ahead and sewed this and then ended up having to overstitch my strap loops on there on the for the front side because I'd already sewn this. So I was just, like I said, I've never made one of these. So it was just kind of a learning process, but I would recommend going ahead and gluing your gusset up to both front and back panels and then putting your strap loops in and then sew both sides at one time. And you'll catch all that at one time. You won't have to go back and overstitch. And so here we're going to go ahead and glue and do the same thing we did on the first panel. Okay, so here I'm going to go ahead and cut our little strap loops. These are one inch by three and a quarter. Basically, it's the same. It's just a drop off piece off of our gusset piece that we cut. So we're just cutting them one inch wide and we'll need three of those. One on each side of the zipper and one at the bottom in the middle over the seam. Okay, so here we're going to glue in the back panel on. If you got a maker stamp or a name or something, just be sure you don't have them one upside down. So just be sure they're facing right and that you've got the zipper in the right spot. And so we're just going to go ahead and line up to our center marks just like we did on the front side. 
and then work our way around and get the gusset glued all in. You'll notice I've got these little shoulder straps, uh, loops already glued in on mine. I'll explain that at the end on why that is, but you won't have any straps in when you're putting this gusset in if you do it correctly. Um, but then we'll just line that up, and then once that's glued in, we'll go ahead and glue our uh, strap loops in. And so as you can see there, my my zipper was too long. That's why I'm saying I would do it with a nine inch instead of a instead of a fourteen inch because that's where I wanted my strap loops, and they were going to cover the zipper. So I ended up having to kind of modify on the fly there and make that work. But we're going to go ahead and glue those in place right there, and then we'll glue the one over the seam, and then sew the back panel on, and that'll get those loops sewn in in place. Now, depending on the machine that you're sewing these on, if you are sewing them on a machine, if you're if you have a little trouble getting this in there when the gusset's in, um, you might try a holster plate or a stirrup plate, and that might give you enough lift to give you just a little bit more clearance. I didn't have any trouble with the uh, with the Cobra; it seemed to fit in there good. Um, but like I said, that may be an option if you've got a little trouble getting that in there far enough to sew it on your machine. So that's sewed up nicely. Now we'll just cut off any excess from the strap loops. And, um, and then we'll go ahead and edge this. Now I'm going to edge this with a pretty heavy edger. Probably use a four or five. And um, you, you, if you've got a lot of excess chap leather hanging out there that you can't get with an edger, you can sure trim it with a razor blade. But I find it a lot easier on the chap leather to just use a big heavy edger and it'll take that right off. And I'm just going to put a little dye. I don't really try to slick chap leather. Anytime you've got some chap leather, that's why we did our slicking on our front and back panels first. It doesn't slick really well. So we'll just dye it and then go over it with some tan coat on the gusset. And that'll bring a real nice luster to that chap leather and to those edges. All 
All right, here we've got our strap, and we're gonna go ahead and just put a three-quarter inch bag punch in there. I'm just using a three-quarter inch cart buckle, stainless steel cart buckle, and um, it'll work nicely for this little purse here, but you could certainly use a custom buckle or a nicer silver buckle or something. And I'm just gonna use a rivet there. This strap is basically just one long strap with a buckle on the end and holes on the other end. There's nothing real complicated about it. All right, so there's our strap, and we'll go ahead and get this fed through the purse. Now, depending on what side you want the buckle on, whether it's going to be carried on the right or left-hand side, would determine on which direction you went in on there. But you just run that through and buckle it, and she's done. All right guys, so that's our purse project. This little round purse goes together so easily. Very easy, you don't really need a sewing machine. You can certainly hand sew this, no bigger than it is. You'll, it'd take a little bit of time, but it wouldn't be too terrible. And, uh, or you could buck stitch it. You could do a number of different things as far as like add fringe or do a number of different things to this purse to kind of modify it. And um, I think it's just a really neat pattern. It's a good springboard for different ideas. And uh, I like things that go together really easy without a lot of trouble because uh, some purses can get very, very complicated, hence why I don't build a lot of them. But that's it, that's the purse. And, and I think it works out really well. So if you're interested in building one of these purses and you'd like to get the companion pack, there's a link down in the description. There's nine different tooling patterns. There's three full floral patterns. And then there's three uh, patterns where that we've, I left the center open um, in some kind of you know different way on each one, but I left the center open so that you can put a brand or initials or something like that in the middle. And then there's three that are like a combo to where you've got a corner set, so to speak, and then you can do some geometric tooling in there. So as you saw in the video, whenever I went to do my my loop pieces. This is how I wanted all three of the uh, strap loops is I wanted them to just come across that gusset and just hang out there. The, the middle one is great because it covers up our overlap where our gusset came together in that stitching. So that covers that. Um, when I got to the zipper, I realized I used too long of a zipper. And since this was the first one I built, I didn't really have any patterns. I was just developing the patterns as I make the project, which is usually how I work. Um, but it catches me sometimes just like it did here. And my zipper, I'd already sewn it into the gusset and, um, and I'd actually honestly sewed my gusset onto the front panel already and I should have waited. I would recommend gluing your gusset in completely, front and back panels, and then add your loop, uh, your strap loops in there, and then sew your top and sew your bottom. And when you do that, you'll sew those loops in place. I'd forgotten the loop when I sewed this top on and so I had to go back and overstitch to get it sewed in. But when I went to go put these loops on, I realized they're going to cover the zipper. And um, I could have brought them down lower, but it would have put both of them really low, say about right there on the purse. I think the purse would have tried to dump out as you were carrying it. I think it would have tried to flip, you know, flip down. And so they needed to be up above this, the horizontal center ju just a little bit. And so I modified mine and was able to kind of just modify on the fly. And I had plenty of room for that strap to still fit through there. So I sewed it right there alongside of the zipper and um, it worked out fine. But in the pattern pack, I have it in there to use a nine inch zipper. This one was 14 inches, which made it too long and kind of caused an issue. So I would recommend a nine inch zipper on this size purse. And then that, then your strap can basically go across where your zipper stops. You have a strap underneath that and same thing on the other side. So as long as you center your zipper on your gusset correctly, um, then your, your uh, strap loops will just go right underneath the zipper right there. And then you won't have this issue like I had. But that's part of designing. When you design without patterns, you kind of run into a few, few things. And then luckily when you get the pattern, all those kinks are usually worked out. So um, by the time you get it, you're, you can usually trust the pattern because I've already made a few mistakes and, and, uh, and learned, learned what to do and what not to do and how things work best. 
I hope you enjoy making one of these. If you want to give one a shot, like I said, they're not hard. You can watch the video and make one, but if you do want some floral patterns, some really, really cool patterns, I put some neat ones in there. There's one feather pattern in there and some different things. There, there's some neat patterns in there. And this thing is just fun to tool because it's not very big, but it's still challenging. And so it's roughly the same amount of tooling that's in our tooling series. Uh, that we do uh, from time to time so it'd be a really good good practice piece and they make a really neat little purse so if uh if you're interested in that check that out i appreciate y'all watching if this is your first time on the channel be sure and subscribe check out dgsaddlery.com and sign up for our leathercraft newsletter and stay connected with us on our upcoming videos and projects and different things going on so i appreciate y'all